Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you so much for being a YouTube member of our channel. We truly appreciate the support and we use that money to buy our equipment, so we totally love it. Now today I've come up with something super fun. So let's look at what we're gonna be making today. You're not gonna be able to see what we're making until the very end, so you'll have to wait for that, but I think you're gonna love it. You guys have been asking for smaller projects, so you can always let me know in the comments if you like kind of the new content we're doing for the members only. The one we're doing today is called Mountain High Table Runner, and we're gonna be using two different flying geese paper, the three by six and the one and a half by three. Now the beauty of flying geese is there's lots of ways to make it. You could figure out how to make this the traditional way, or you could use even the Eleanor Burns flying geese ruler. So you can still do this doing a different method. Today I'm just gonna show you how to use the paper. And this is super scrap friendly. So this is something that you could do from your stash. If you don't wanna use your stash, what we're starting with is the Beautiful Day Fat Eighth Bundle. And there's eight fabrics in the bundle, I think. Oh, there's actually more than that, okay. So there's more than that, but we're just gonna, you only need eight. Of course, you could do fewer if you want. And then we found a background from the Love Lily collection, and we'll link both of these products in the description box. But you don't have to use what we're using. We're just having something from our inventory to show you, but you can definitely use scraps. So what I've done is I've taken six of the eight fat eights, and I have it starched. So we just picked eight out of this bundle and we have this background. We have everything starched. And what I'm gonna do is just jump in and first we're gonna make large flying geese with those fabrics. And then we're gonna use small flying geese with these fabrics. So I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna do two different methods so that you can see how versatile this product is if you wanna do it a slightly different way than the instructions say. So I'm gonna take two papers out because I'm gonna be making two pink. So with these two pages, with this page I'll make two pink and with this page I'll make two green. And on this, I don't have any of it memorized, I just flip open the top and it's gonna tell me what sizes to cut. So for placement one, which is gonna be the dark fabric, we need to cut a seven by seven and three quarter inch rectangle. So I'm gonna do that first. So, and again, each of these is gonna make two. Each paper makes two, whether it's any of the sizes. So we need seven and three quarters by seven and a half. Let me just make sure that that's right. And I, I don't have any of this memorized. I just always look at the, the top. Seven by seven and three quarters. And this doesn't have to be exact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the bottom, that's seven inches, go across, and then seven and three quarters is about right there because it does not need to be exact. So that's how I'm gonna cut those. And just remember, you don't have to do exact. So there's those two. Now I'm gonna put this aside and we'll use that later. You'll use that later to make some small. And the point of this is more to just, um, just show you some different techniques, different ways to work with paper, not to make it like so exact as a project, if that makes sense. Now we need two four and a half inch squares cut on the diagonal for each. So that means I need four. So I'm gonna just fold this over. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. I'll put this aside. And like I said, this is not how you would normally cut because it's not exact. This is not how I normally cut, but with the paper, you can. Now, anytime I cut a background, I always put right side fabric, fabrics right side up because 
I don't want to accidentally put the wrong fabric. And since this fabric, it's um, white on white on one side. So then what I'm going to do, this is not in the instructions. This is just what I do to make it easier. I like to add a crease between the lines. And using this method actually uses less fabric than if you are using the traditional flying geese method. So you should always have enough fabric from your kit. I'm just going to cut this little side stuff off. And now what you see is this square right here. And you can either pin or use glue. I prefer to use glue. And I just use a glue, a glue stick. I don't use the other glue I use just because that would be too permanent. So I'm gonna go this way. This way. Sorry. I let my glue dry this way. See my glue, it already dried. Okay. So. And you just wanna make sure it covers. And if you wanna peek, you just need to make sure it covers to the solid lines all the way around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold between the one, after the one on all of them. And you can save this if you want for later. Okay, so correction, this paper actually, um, it saves fabric on the white and on the dark, it uses the same exact amount of fabric. So, so it was correct what I said, just a little bit off. Okay, sometimes I get the papers confused. And you'll see what you're doing here is you're making two flying geese at one time. And because I am cutting this, all these at one time, you'll see that when I get to the sewing machine, I don't even have to get up to iron. So these you can either save or get rid of either one. And what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna be adding twos, stopping, using the seam press tool, and then adding the other two. So we're gonna go to the sewing machine and I'll show you what we're gonna do there. So what you'll do is have your open toe foot and I'm gonna go to number two. So this is number two. Flip that over, put my fabrics right sides together and I'm just gonna hold that in place. I'm not gonna use glue or anything. I'm gonna lower my stitch link to a 1.5 and just stitch on the line. Now what I like to do is I go all the way across. I feel like that gives a better result and I do start and stop a quarter inch away from that line. I'm gonna go to the other side, to the other number two, right sides together, and stitch. Now from here, if you just push your fabric over right here, you can just use the seam align tool, press, And then you can just clip right here these little edges off. Just pull the paper up a little bit. And then you don't have to stop, go to the iron and all of that. And then you'll add to number three and just get that nice and flat. Right sides together. And then again, start and stop a quarter inch away.
And this is something that you can just use scraps with. And then we'll go press this in a second. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my green. And at the end, I will tell you exactly how many you need to make to make the whole table runner. So let's see. And then press. Do the same thing, clip these little dog ears off. Now, if you hadn't trimmed this side of the triangle, you would have to stop and trim. I do, everybody does this paper just a little bit differently and it all ends up with the same result. So you don't have to do it exactly like me. You can do it whichever way works best for, um, for you at your house. steam off and we're going to just press this out. The reason I'm not using steam is I don't want the paper to shrink. So you just press. It kind of needs to heat up a little bit. I feel like it's not getting as hot because I don't have the steam on. I'm just not used to not having steam. So it does, it's not going to get as flat just because there's no steam, which I love steam. But just now at home, I will tell you, I do use steam. You're not supposed to. So on the video, I'm not going to use steam because you're not supposed to. So here what you're going to do is you're going to, we're going to cut on the solid lines. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. And the dotted lines are just um, for you to kind of use as a guide. And the best thing about this is you're not having to measure. You just cut on solid lines and it's going to come out the way it should. Now, one thing I have found is if you use a size 90 needle, your paper will come off a little bit faster. But I just, it just depends. I like to use a size 80 when I'm stitching. So it's up to you if you want to switch between an 80 and a 90. This is a size 80 needle, but if you use a size 90, it will come off a little bit faster um, or a little bit like more crisp. So it's up to you what you want to do. Um, I, I just use 80, but if you want it to come off quicker, you would use a 90. So there's two of our flying geese. I'll put those aside. We'll do the same thing on the green. Now, the point of the beginning of the video is just to show you how to use the paper. And so I'm just focusing on technique and really the most important part here is to make sure you cut straight and like right here, I'm a little bit off. So I'm gonna fix that. The key is just to cut right on the lines. That's gonna be the most accurate and so directly on the line and that's all that you really have to worry about with the paper. Now the disadvantage with the paper is you cannot press open. And I have had a, I have a little technique where I figured out how to press open, but it's not as accurate. So I, um, I'm just gonna say the paper doesn't press open. And you'll see on this, we just end up pressing some of our units open instead of the flying geese open and that ends up working. So this is how you would make two flying geese from one sheet of paper. 
and you will have a mess on your floor. Um, and if you have teenagers or kids, they can pull the paper off for you. That's what my kids do. So I have made two because I'm going to be making some units. Now what I'm going to do is show you on our smaller pad of paper right here, we need to make, you know, you need to make a couple for each. And I'm going to give you the number at the end. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to show you how to make one per paper. I'm going to cut off, like I said, all this little extra dotted line stuff just so it's easier to see. And the reason we have that extra paper is um, it costs more to get a special paper. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. And instead of following the instructions exactly like they are, I'm going to cut this in half. And we're going to make one color, one color, one color, one color. And I'm going to make it work. So here what I'm going to do is I'm still going to crease all of these lines right here between right after the one and then I'm going to show you the little cheat. So the point of this is just to show you even though you're supposed to make two for each sheet you can do only one if you want to. Now for this quilt you do need to make two but for demonstration purposes I'm just showing you a little bit different way so that you know, because at home sometimes I think we get stuck and we um, kind of get set in our ways, but this way is gonna just show you a little cheat because you don't always have to do things exactly, exactly like the instructions. So what I've done here is I'm gonna line up the salvages. I'm gonna put one of these on here, far enough away from the salvage. I'm gonna cut that off. Now, what's great about this is this is what I mean about you can make it scrappy. You don't have to cut it exactly what it says. So here I'm just going to put the paper on here. Now I cut too big of a piece. It, that's fine. You can cut a bigger piece as long as it's just not smaller. This is just a way to show you if you want to do it with scraps, and have all different fabrics, it is doable even though you're using the paper. So from here, I'm gonna fold this back and I'm gonna cut a quarter inch away. And on these add a, cuddle, add a quarter rulers, I like the pink one because it has an easier, this, this little right here, this little edge right here is really sharp. It's sharper than the yellow. And so that's why I use the pink. I know there's a technical term for it, of course, when I'm on a video, I can't remember what it is, but I do prefer the pink. I'm not associated with that company in any way, um, but I just personally like the pink. Well, I do like the color pink better than yellow too, but the pink one works better for the techniques that I'm using with the paper. So, you can see on this one, I didn't even look at my cutting for the dark prints. So you can always be flexible anytime you're working with stuff. Now I need to cut my triangle fabrics. So I'm gonna need four three inch squares cut on the diagonal. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna cut from here. And this one, the reason I'm doing this is we're just cutting from scraps. I'm just showing you what you would do if you're just cutting from scraps. If you're cutting from yardage and you're making the whole thing, you would cut differently. Like a little bit more carefully and a little bit more planned. And then again, fabrics right side up. So right side up, flip, right side up, flip, right side up, flip. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the sewing machine. And I'm gonna add two first. It really doesn't matter if you do two or three first, but I'm gonna do two. Now what you wanna make sure here is you don't wanna be too far down here. 
If you're too far down, you won't have enough room. So you need to be further up, you need to have at least a quarter inch above here, which I would do about a three eighths of an inch past. And we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna use the quick press seam roller, press, and then add the second one. So I'm gonna do all the twos first. And um, I do go all the way past. You don't have to, you could stop quicker. I just think mine come out better when I sew that way. I'm just going to use the bed of my machine to press this and that's just a time saver you can always get up and go to the iron you can do whatever I'm just trying to show you different things that I do to save time because to be able to knock out or quilt as many quilts as I do I have to be super efficient with my time and I'm going to pull that little tab back and cut that Part Now I'm going to do that same thing, go to the iron, press, and if this isn't perfectly flat, you can always just um, iron kind of like that. And you can just let the iron sit on it for about, I don't know, I would say five seconds. See right there, I was able to press that a little bit better. Just let that sit. And then here, this is what's so fun with these papers is you don't have to sit and like measure. All you have to do is cut, just cut on that line. And the more accurate you cut on the line, unlike me, the more accurate your flying geese will be. And um, I would love for you guys to try, try making the paper with an 80 needle and then try with the 90 needle and then let me know what you think. Um, I might change my mind and then switch to a 90. I just think a 90 is a little, um, I don't know, for my piecing it's just a little, I guess too much, I don't know the right word, so. Um, but I guess if one day, if I was just doing paper all day and not piecing blocks, I would probably use a 90. But if I was alternating between paper and piecing, I'd probably just use an 80. So y'all guys, let me know what y'all do at home. And if you've used the paper. But like I said, you have the sizes that I use. So you can always, 
if you want to do this a different method you totally can and have the same look in the end because at the end you're going to be able to see what we're making and I'm going to give you like more detailed details at the end. And like right here, I'm a little bit, I just need to trim a tiny bit more off. So even that much does make a difference to me. It does. So from here, what we're gonna do is focus on making the unit that you're gonna need. You're gonna need eight units for this. So I'm gonna show you how to make one and then we're gonna attach it to what, um, what our sample sewer sewed before the video started. And I'm gonna give you some pressing tips. And just try to get all your paper off. Now for this, I only need, for each unit you need two large and four small. So I'm gonna lay mine out. Kind of the way the unit is going to look so you can visually see it. So this is gonna be one unit and you're gonna do eight. Now of course, if you're doing this, you can make several runners. You can make it a longer runner. You can make it a shorter runner and just do like um, eight units by 10 units or something. You can make this a quilt. It doesn't have to be a runner, but the runner, um, if you wanted it to be wider, you would obviously have to add a unit over here. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to put these right sides together. These two, I am going to definitely pin at the beginning and the end here. Same thing here. And now I'm, we're working on the unit. Now, before I go so I am gonna turn my iron on steam. From here, I'm gonna change to a quarter inch foot. And you're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam. Lengthen your stitch length, which I didn't do, but lengthen your stitch length back to a norm, whatever your normal is. And then you'll see if your point me meets. Now, some people sew with the point on top so you can exactly meet it. I actually don't do that. I actually sew with the straight side and hope it meets. And it does. And that's just personal preference. Um, but I, th I would say most people do it opposite of me, but I just find that I get a straighter line with that flat piece on top. So here, what we're gonna do is press to one side and then press open. Super easy. And you will see why we're pressing open in a little bit. Cause you're gonna have a lot of seams next to each other. So we want all of our, I guess they call them like the geese and the goose, or I don't know. You want all your points in the same direction. So point, 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 point. And then we're gonna pin. And this one, when I pin, some people will sew with the seams up. I'm gonna sew with mine not. And you're gonna see that right here these go the same direction. So they're gonna, you're gonna have a little bit of a bulk and that's gonna be okay, we're gonna make it work. Just line it up. And like I said, I'm gonna sew with this side on the top. And like I said, I just get a straighter line. I feel like if I'm going here, I'm looking too much and I go out of um, sync a little bit. And it 
create matches. Matches. So from here, I'm gonna also press these open. those open and using a clapper on these would be really good because you've got a lot of bulk and that'll get it really nice and flat and again here you want to make sure your points are all on one side I mean you technically could do that and you'd have a totally different runner and you could do that across but this is our design what we've done here now right here you're gonna see that this and this you need that to nest so I'm gonna put this on top and what I always do is pin on each end first. That just gives me some stability and I know that it, see it just lays flat. Now what I'm gonna do is I need this point to match this point. And I just eyeball it, put a pin right there. And then I'm gonna put one more pin here. So with a quarter inch seam, It matches. I could go down a little bit more, just a tiny, tiny bit more, to make it perfect. So here, I would say you can either press open or press to one side, because this part is not touching another row behind it, just because it's, so I'm just gonna press to one side. But if you're going to attach this, like with more rows this way, you would press open. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make eight of these. So you're gonna make 16 large flying geese, which is gonna use eight of the large papers. You're gonna make 32 small flying geese, which is gonna use 16 of these papers. So use scraps or bad eights is really friendly for this. So once you've done that, ta-da, magic sewing. You're gonna lay them out. And so we have seven. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all the um, flying geese are going one way. And like I said, you can Rotate them if you want, it just won't look as good. So from here, I'm just gonna add to the very last row and I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna put the smaller one on top. Pin on each side. And I think you could do this, if you were doing this at home, you would chain sew. So you would do like all eight or all 16 large flying geese with the eight paper at one time. And then all 32 small flying geese with the 16 papers all at one time. And then you could piece all your units at one time. And one thing I also like about the papers is you don't have to worry about having a special ruler or anything because you can just use any ruler you're using. So this comes out to nine and a half by 48 and a half. And 
And so we can put the fabric requirements in the description box. And I'm gonna talk about some different possibilities here. So like I said, this is nine units across. You could obviously do a quilt with like three units. One more row of three, one more row of three. So you could do table toppers, you could do a whole quilt. Um, you just uh, have fun with it. And then what you can do here is you can either add borders or not. I think that if you add borders, it kind of takes away from the intricate design. So what I decided is we're just gonna put a gray on the edge as binding. And the reason I picked this one is it's just solid and it's not too busy. If you put a print that was real busy on the outside, I think it would be very um, busy and take away from the quilt. So I'm gonna use this for the binding. And then I just picked like a lighter gray for the background. And then this one, if you made the charity quilt, you might have enough left over of these big pieces to make one of these table runners. But definitely, thank you so much for being a member. Any questions on this table runner, we're happy to answer. And we would love for you to send ideas. Is there any other type of product you would like me to demo for members only? We really wanna make your membership worth it to you. So any kind of suggestions you have, we'll um, definitely take. And I think you'll have fun making this table runner. So I'll see you next time.